collaborate with a lot of different authors. You want to collaborate, you, okay. Do you ever do mentor new authors, like new writers? <sighs> I would like to. <laughs> uh, it, no. no. Uh, you know, I, I have it's the, uh, what's Masterclass, I have that thing. Okay. You know, that, that's as close. I'm not trying to sell you on Masterclass, but there it is. Oh, yeah, our friend. Yeah, I know, not you, your friend. I got it, yeah. Um, no, but, but that's a good thing because I do whatever I know, there it is. And, and I, don't, I don't ever give advice. I just tell, this is what I do. You may find some of it helpful. But the other thing is the stuff that you're nodding to, I don't mean you, but in general, forget about that because you already know that. The stuff that you're shaking your head, that's the stuff you ought to think about because that's the stuff you're not doing. And if you're going to get better, it's going to be because you change and figure out new things. And it's going to be stuff that you're kind of going, I don't know about that. Outline, outline, outline. How much is spent on the research? How much is spent on the outline? How much is spent on no the idea. writing? Uh, the outline is, is really important. I usually do three or four drafts of the outline. And if you read... I mentioned going on sub Substack. I'm going to actually one of the things I'm going to do is put an outline out there so people can see, and then and then encourage them to look at the actual book to see, because I'm not a slave to the outline. It's right. I have the outline and it's useful. And you know, one of the nice things is I never get up and there's a blank piece of paper because theoretically there's the chapter that's supposed to. But sometimes you you know you're, you're writing and a character gets. You just like the character better than you thought you would, or the character is more interesting, or you made some changes, and you know, or you were that person was supposed to die, and you go, "Oh no, I can't kill that person. <laughs> oh, I love them too much," <laughs> like that. Who, next, yeah. How did you get the courage to write your first novel, and where did you get the idea from? Oh well, the first novel, I'm like 25 years old, so and I didn't courage. It was just chutzpah, you know, whatever. Um, and I went to I went to grad school at Vanderbilt, and I wrote actually my master's thesis was on. And this was during Vietnam. That's why I mean, people go. He dropped out. Of, I didn't drop out. It was during Vietnam. You know, it was a mess. And um, uh, but the, the master's thesis was fiction, and I got a lot of encouragement there. I, I took a write, creative writing course. It was the only one I ever took, and the professor was very. It was it was weird because I was like this little hippie, and he couldn't have been more conservative. He could have been Fox News guy you know, back then when there was no Fox News, but he really liked what I did, and he really encouraged me. So that was a, that was a big deal. My other big supporter was my grandmother, and my grandmother she just she had this thing: hungry dogs run faster, uh, and that's driven me, you know. And that, and that was her deal. And her thing was like, you can do anything. Uh, um, that you want to do. She said, you're, you're not going to play any basketball in the NBA, so cross that out. Here's my sports highlight reel, and this is better than Ainsley's. Uh, I could dunk when I was in high school, and I have nine holes in one. I think Ainsley has a couple. He's better than I am, but I'm better at holes in one. Nine holes in yeah. one. Sue has six. I, I'm stuck. <laughs> Sue's the real jock in our house. She, she's a four-time All-American swimmer, so she's, she's the real... Yeah, back there, somebody. So let's say you're meeting William Shakespeare, the author. What yeah, question? William Shakespeare as opposed to the, the shoemaker. What, what yeah, question okay. would you ask him? <laughs> would you want to ask William Shakespeare? What would I want to ask him? Uh, why did you use all that funny words in, the, in, your, in your... You know, the, the, one of the interesting... I always thought it would be cool because w w when I was... Um, introduced to Shakespeare, like in high school, whatever. It was terrible because, you know, the, the teacher would just go Catholic school, you know, the brother would say, you know, read 40 pages, and if, if you flunked a test, we're going to beat you with a stick or something, which is not the way to learn stuff, you know. But I just thought, you know, like for, 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 for kids, it would be cool you come in and, and you have everybody stand on their, on their chairs, and uh, you say, okay, look, I want to set the scene for you. Back in, in these days in London, stage was huge. And it was nowhere else in the world. It was pretty much just London, maybe a little in Paris, where the theater was, was just a massive thing, like bigger than the movies everywhere here. People used to go. But the, 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 the rooms were incredibly noisy, and people were getting drunk, and there's all sorts of craziness going on. So the actors had to like scream out the parts. And it was all males in those initially. And so, so we're going to read a little bit of Macbeth, but we're going to scream it out. In the, uh, and the other thing, just before we start, I'm just going to give you a little bit of history, just a tiny little bit so you understand a little bit of this. And the other cool thing about Shakespeare, and this is really a cool thing, kids, that 
he would just invent words and phrases. So you notice I covered all the, whatever they call these things, smart boards or whatever the hell they have. I've covered them with all of these phrases and words. He invented all of those words. He just invented them. But here's another cool thing to think about, kiddies. Every word that we use, every word you've ever used in your life, somebody invented that word, <laughs> which is kind of cool thing about language. At any rate, so yeah, that's Shakespeare. That's true. Yeah, I was right. wondering if you think about appealing to Gen Z, the, the audience that doesn't I don't think do you, that Do you way. think about readers being old, young? I don't. Or? I try not to. I mean, it comes up a little bit. No, I don't. I want to write stories. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 when I'm doing a story, I want to have the sense that people are going to want to read it. But I don't, I don't do the more, you know, mm, yeah, no, can't do it. It's, it's, just not, it's just not for me. The, the publishers, they try to do that. Oh, we're going to get Gen No, you're not going to get Gen Z. They're not going to, it's not going to happen. So what I want to ask you, as an English major, who was your an author that inspired you? Uh, well, I, I, I just in terms of, of style and voice, um, uh, Mrs. Bridge and Mr. Bridge. I don't know if you've ever read those. Um, those were two, Evan Connell, Evan Connell Jr. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm names. I'm. It's a horror show. Uh, Jersey Kaczynski, Steps, Painted Bird, whatever, the, the kind of tight stuff. Uh, you know, uh, Gabriel Gar Garcia Marquez, not in terms of that I thought, I didn't think I could do anything like that. And that's one of the things that drove me into writing mysteries. I cannot do 100 Years of Solitude. I cannot do that. I would love to be able to do that. I can't do it. How about Day of the Jackal? Maybe, <laughs> you know, like that. So that's kind of, you know, but those were some of the, you know, some of the people. But I, I read... Uh, like a maniac, I, I mentioned working in, in the uh, in, uh, mental hospital, and I used to work a lot of night shifts, and I'd go into Cambridge you know, three times a week and just get books, and this is how I, I just turned myself into a reader, and I would just read, read, read everything I get my hands on. It was all serious stuff, not the kind of crap that I write, you know. <laughs> I was a literary snob. Then how you collaborate with other writers? Does it depend on the story, the writer? Like, do you write some of it? The, the other person writes it, the it other really, part? Yes, it does depend on the story and the writer, and it's very different. Uh, you know, obviously with President Clinton, Dolly, different than, you know, there's certain writers I write with, like, um, you know, on a regular basis. Lupica, Lupica and I talk like six times a day. It's like a writer's room. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most intimate of the other, you know, Maxine Pietro and I will talk, you know, every week. She does a Women's Murder Club mostly. It goes back, and it really depends. Sometimes, you know, I'll write, sometimes it will go back and forth. We'll, we'll each do some of the chapters. Sometimes I'm doing the outline and, 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 and a rewrite or two. So it, it really does depend. I'm doing one with Viola Davis now, which is kind of cool. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got one here in the back? Novel, yeah. I try to do two here. Uh, if you had uh, two or three uh, people in the nonfiction world that you'd really like to write, um, who who might they be? If you can share that. Across I'm sorry, that. two or three few. You know, people. Oh, that they'd like, like to, to write do, about that you would like to write about on a nonfiction basis. Then, secondly, no, I, I I like to write novels. I like to write one with Pope Francis. Cool, and we could travel together. It'd be so cool, like the Pope Mobile. We go out <laughs> like here. It would be so, and he'd be here speaking Italian with a little hat and everything. It would be so cool. Do you have a couple favorite words? A couple favorite words? Yeah, that you use all the time. I'll tell you a you joke. keep going back to. I'll tell you a joke. It's going to have a bad word in it, so if you don't like the bad word, just cover your ears. So this guy goes into the confessional. I hate jokes that start that way. He says, oh, Father, I said the F word. And he says, oh, what happened? He said, well, I'm golfing. And I hit a, the best job of the be, best drive of, of, of the year, and it must have hit a rock or something. It bounced sideways into the weeds, and the priest says, "Oh, is that when he said the F word?" He said, "Oh no, father." I bounced one out of the weeds. It went about ten yards back, still in the weeds. The priest says, "Is that when he said?" "Oh no, father." He said, "I banked another one out of out of out of the weeds. It's right on the green. It's rolling, rolling. I can see it. it's going right toward the pin. It hits the pin dead on the metal. It bounces back about a foot." And the priest says, oh, that's when he said the F word. He said, no, Father. The priest leads in. He said, you didn't miss the fucking putt, did you? <laughs> so, yeah, occasionally we use it. We use a swear word. Yeah. Every once in a while. Hi. My name is Beth. I'm a teacher. I was wondering, how do you inspire children 
um, when you're teaching writing, tasers. Yeah. <laughs> when you're teaching writing, we use story maps, we use outlines, we use um, all kinds of different ways to get them to develop their characters, develop yeah. the plot. Yeah. How old are the kids? 10, 11. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what I would do. I mean, I couldn't do it because I don't have the patience, but I'd be inclined more simple-minded stuff like um, of have, you know, have them read really cool stories. You know, where uh, there are millions of kids in this country who have never read a, a book or a story that they like. That's a starter, <laughs> that they like them. And then I just have them, like, stand up and tell a story about anything, you know? Uh, tell you know whatever you had a dinosaur in your house. You, had, you woke up and you went downstairs and it was a dinosaur at breakfast table. I don't know what happened. That's Kafka in a different Kafka way. Kafka esque, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That and you don't have to tell them it's Kafka esque. Save that for like when they're like thirteen or something. I'm just kind of curious when you write a book with somebody like Clinton or Dolly yeah. or other famous people. How much of it do they really write and how much do you write? They write. It depends. It really depends on their. The, the, the main, I don't necessarily need uh, more writers, um, but when you, when you write with, with President Clinton or Dolly, you're getting an inside, you're getting some information, but he really knows what the Secret Service would do, he, you know, and, and as opposed to just making shit up, which I do. <laughs> so instead of that, I'm actually, it's like, oh, wow, that's how it would work. Oh, I <laughs> uh, So that's, a, that's a, the cool stuff about that. And it really, it does vary, and, and, you know, I don't kiss and tell, by the way, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, your ability to generate so many stories is, kind of unprecedented. How many outlines don't get finished and get abandoned? First part Not too question. many. Do them one at a time, because I, I have to, like, too many questions, I'll forget the first. Uh, occasionally, uh, but not, not that often. Sometimes I'll just, I mean, there, there are things, there's, there's three or four things sitting around which is just a page in my office, and, and I, don't, I don't know if I'll do them or not. I just have a couple of thoughts at this stage. Do you ever think about uh, something not fitting the genre, and do you think about playing with that? Like, does it fit the typical? I'm I'm all over the lot anyway. I mean, the mysteries are the mysteries. <sighs> I've done a lot of kids' books, which I, I, to some extent I, I think they're some of my best. And they're actually um, because Alice isn't that funny, Alice Cross. But some of the kids' stuff is pretty funny, you know. So I enjoy doing that. It's very different. There's a whole series of nonfiction I've done uh, with um, uh, Matt. Matt Eversman. Matt Eversman. Matt was the actual sergeant who was portrayed in the movie Black Hawk Down. He's a good friend of mine in Florida. And um, uh, he did a little documentary, and I watched it. And I, I, he was really great at interviewing people, military people. And, and I, I watched him, I said, let's do something. The title came to me, Walk in My Combat Boots. And it's a book where, and our mission was, if, you, if you've been in combat, you would read it and say, Eversman and Patterson got it right. And if you're one of these people that BS is that you, you understand the military, you would read it and say, I had no idea. And now I understand it a lot better than I did. We did a thing about cops, and it's not like pro-cop, it's not pro-cop or negative cop, it's just cop. And once again, uh, that if you're one of these people you think you know what you're talking about, you would read it and say, okay, I really didn't know what I was talking about. So you actually, and there aren't that many books to me, I mean, there are books where you learn a lot of facts, a lot of information, but not that many where you go, okay, I thought I understood police, or I thought I understood the military, or we're doing one on teachers, I thought I understood teachers. But all of a sudden you go like, I, I kind of get this in a way that I didn't before. So, and that's very different than, the, obviously, than the, the mysteries or you know, whatever. Yes. Is there a genre you haven't tried? Well, there are a few that I wouldn't do. Um, I would not do a, a strict military thriller because I don't, I don't get how generals think or talk or whatever. I would never do, I've done love stories. I wouldn't do a romance. Nothing against them, but I, I don't understand them. Um, fantasy, I could, I could, I, well, I did fantasy. Maximum Ride, so yeah. that was yeah. kind of fantasy, YA fantasy kind of we stuff. Have, we have time for one more, I think. In the one back. more, it better be a good one, too. Oh, pressure no. Oh, oh no, yeah, pressure, pressure, man, pressure. pressure. Who's Is got that working? mic? Yeah. Oh, there the it is. Pressure. 
Yeah. When you were growing up in Newburgh, were your parents great storytellers or people in your family that inspired uh, that's you? That's a good story. A good question. Oh. Uh, we're, um, I would say, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, they really weren't. 